So, welcome to Hamburg. Welcome to Discover. I know it might be odd that I'm sitting down here all by myself. Um, we're doing a video format, uh, and we're doing this to put this out to the whole world. Most of you understand the purpose of Discover. We want to bring um, a different kind of approach to spreading the method, message of health and chiropractic. And I wanted to start out, welcome everybody here, explain to you a little bit how this came about and share my own chiropractic story as everybody else is gonna be sharing their stories here this weekend. Uh, first of all, what I ask everybody is, because we're filming this, if, if you wanna talk in chat, we have the video out in the room out there where you can watch. So if you're in the room, we ask that everybody's not loud because we have a small room and we appreciate that. So last year, uh, myself and some of my students uh, were invited by Dr. Michael Dibley to speak at an event in Brussels. And it was really great. We had a great time. And uh, after the event, Michael and I talked about taking this to a whole nother level, making it more intimate and bringing in different people, mostly people that have been practicing chiropractic a very long time, uh, along with a group of medical doctors that I've trained that have been practicing chiropractic. Some are still in the transition of making the transition from medicine into chiropractic because we wanted to deliver a message to the world about health. And we wanted to do it with a diverse group of people in a very intimate setting. And, you know, we looked at a lot of different places. We liked this place. We liked the flow of this. And we thought, this is the place that we're going to do this. And we want to, we want to start a movement. Um, we feel very similar about chiropractic, Michael and I. And I have to share the story first. How I met Michael. A couple of years ago, Michael called me up on the phone and asked me a few questions about doing some things with him. And I said, yeah, I don't want to do any of that. I don't really go far from my home anymore, except when I'm doing healing fest in Mallorca or seminars. I said, look, it's great. You know, Michael, you're younger. I was like that when I was younger, wanting to fly all over doing things. And uh, he kept inviting me, well, why don't you meet me here or there? And I'm like, look, you seem like a great guy, you know, but I'm just going to tell you honestly, it's just not going to happen. So I said, look, if any time you want to come down and visit me in Hamburg, uh, you know, I have a program that I have a group of people once a month. I said, you're welcome to come down. And I don't know, it felt like a few days later, he just showed up. He drove all the way down from Norway. And uh, I don't know this guy. So I kind of, when I don't know somebody, I kind of put them through the ringers. My, my wife and, and boys weren't in town at the time, so I put them in one of my son's bedrooms and I said to him, look, that bed needs to look exactly like what it looks like now. And I don't know if he took a picture of it, but I was surprised in the morning that it looked exactly, you know, most, most grown men don't make the bed if they don't have a woman with them. I'm kind of guilty of that because my wife spoils me, but everything was exactly the way it was before. And I noticed that he noticed little things about my very anal mind that I never talked to anybody about. Like I pulled my car into the garage and it's literally one centimeter from the concrete every single day. And he noticed it every time I pulled in. First he asked me and I said, I don't. <laughs> that he kind of saw behind the crazy a little bit. And I thought, okay, he's kind of the similar crazy as me. So that's how it started with Michael because I, I really didn't know him. You know, he's a little bit younger than I am. That's being kind to my age, not his. And uh, so that's how this thing started. We talked a lot about this, about what part of what we did last year on making it expand. So all of you are participants in the beginning of something, hopefully, <coughs> 
that'll bring a higher standard to what we all do and what we all cherish and what we all hold dear. Uh, last year was the first time I really told my chiropractic story in public, but they didn't put it out to the public. So when I was 12 years old, my spine was broken for the first time and I was pretty much incapacitated from the waist down and had an adjustment and could walk again. So, and it wasn't that I really thought of chiropractic chiropractors like superheroes because this changed my life so much, but I didn't really think that I could be a doctor. I failed 10th grade biology. I'm not really a great student, so it wasn't until I got out of the military and I opened up a gym in a Kung Fu school and I started thinking it could be possible. I, I just thought of chiropractic as something far beyond anything I could actually achieve. So I was a patient for 18 years before I became a chiropractor. And I think that my edge and everything that I do is I still look through everything through the eyes of a patient. And it's now been longer that I've been in practice than I was a patient, but I still always think like a patient. People are asking me all the time, how do you motivate medical doctors, and I say, I don't. I just show them what my standard is, and I always say that everything happens through experience. Everything that's good in my life came through chiropractic. Uh, people also ask me, how did you end up in Germany? Because I have a German wife, did you meet her? Did she bring you over here? You can actually blame it all on that wonderful Frenchman over there, Dr. John Paul Pianta. Uh, when I was in the military, I spent some time in Europe and I really liked the idea of quality over quantity. So I wanted to live in Europe for a few years. I didn't really have any pressing urge. I sold my house. I had quite a bit of money in my pocket and I didn't really know a lot of people. I knew this one guy who was French living in Germany. And I just had planned, my plans were I was going to live in Europe for a few years, and I told myself, I'm not going to own a business, I'm not going to have employees, I'm not going to own a car or a television. Those were all the plans. And the car thing was the first. I think I lasted, what, two weeks, three weeks, John Paul? Um, but anyways, I had bought a one-way ticket to Frankfurt. And when I landed, I called up this man and... He just demanded that I get on a fast train and come to Hanover. So I did. That's where I started with John Paul. And it was very shortly after I was there, I met this amazing woman, Dr. Karen Rosner. And these are the first two people, and they're still in my lives. They're two of my closest friends. I met Dr. Rosner uh, a few weeks later. I met the woman who was going to change my life. And give me my family. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been, it seems not so long ago. So I'm starting to feel the years. Now I see my kids are almost as big as me now. And I feel like I just arrived here with four suitcases. So yeah. And some people are wondering why did I start teaching chiropractic? I never wanted to. I don't like teachers. I don't like the idea of being a teacher. I don't have any patience. I just realized when I came here, because I, I broke another bone in my spine when I was in the military, so I have a very unstable spine, and I need to be adjusted every week. And the quality of what was here was, because I came to Hamburg, John Paul was in Hanover, so when I wanted to go to Justman, I had to fly or travel somewhere. So I decided what I was taught from my father who was a Marine and I learned in the military, if you want something right, you do it yourself. So I thought, instead of complaining, I'm just gonna build my own army of chiropractors. And what you're meeting actually right now is a culmination of what I've produced to take it to the next level. And uh, that's the only reason it started that way, is I just wanted to find some people that were already practicing chiropractic and raise the bar on what it is they're doing. Just increase the standards and quality 
it's the only thing I know how to do. I'm not smart. I don't have any new ideas. I just understand that everything comes from personal standards. Uh, when people ask me, a couple of years ago, Michael convinced me to go to a chiropractic seminar in Edinburgh. And it was really nice. I met some really interesting people. And this woman asked me, where do you get your certainty from? And I had to think about that question for about a year and a half. Because I think certainty is an illusion. And I really think about this often as, what is certainty? I mean, do you absolutely know everything with black and white? And I think everything stems from a standard. I don't have any certainty. I have a standard that's on a path of constant, never-ending improvement. And it's only the standard in which I have for me that I can show other people. I don't have anything else. I think of it the same way with chiropractic care. I think of food. People have asked me a lot, how did you, where did you learn how to cook? And I said, I never learned how to cook. I learned how to eat. I learned what I like to eat. And I think if something is really fantastic for me, really delicious, the majority of people are going to find it pretty yummy. There's always a few weirdos that like pickled monkey balls or something strange outside of the ordinary. But I think the same thing with health, that my standard is going to be what my standard is, and most people will like that. Uh, and there might be those that won't. I'm not going to say everybody, but this is... And I, I wanted to explain this because when some of these people get up on, on speaking this weekend and they're talking, and if you're wondering how did you motivate them, I, I really didn't. Everybody in this room is self-motivated. What I'm doing is showing people how to create a higher standard within themselves. Not my standard, because my standard is irrelevant to others. What's important for all of you is what your standard is. So that's going to be it for my story. And we're going to spend the rest of this weekend is going to be a similar format. I hope all of you got the sheets. We're going to stick to this format. It's going to be an interview format. I'm going to sit and ask people about their stories. Tonight, we have a panel discussion with some of the medical folks in the room. And tomorrow night, there's going to be a panel discussion with the women in chiropractic and healthcare. So, thank you very much. And I'm gonna bring up Dr. Rosener.